things that he has done for this community. Music will be a big part of today's ceremony and there's no doubt about it, he was a country music fan. Yes, he was. Uh, many of the, uh, I, I shouldn't say many, all, all the songs that are being played, uh, to my knowledge, are all country music. There might be one at the end that I don't have a list of uh, when the officers are filing out, but uh, all the others are definitely from uh, country music. Tracy Lawrence will be represented, Garth Brooks, Hank Williams Jr., yes. just to name a few. And I'm, I'm quite sure many of the people around here will will recognize the songs when they hear it and, and appreciate them. And when a musical tribute is carried out during today's funeral service, there will be pictures on the jumbotrons or the big screens in the arena. Yes, that's correct. Um, he actually uh, will have uh, several songs. The first song, uh, they'll actually have a picture of him from the Honey Creek Fire Department uh, when he served there. Uh, the next one from the Vigo County Sheriff's uh, Department. The next one will be his official portrait for the Terre Haute Police Department. Then he'll have a picture uh, in his SWAT gear with some of his team members. And that one won't be an official portrait, but it'll actually be one of the shots when he was out on uh, uh, training. Later on, he'll have, there will be a picture at another tribute uh, with his canine partner, Shadow we've heard about. And then the final one will be uh, somewhat a picture collage or a video. And this one is uh, uh, very, there's not words to describe it because for me to show, uh, for the public to show the outpouring of their appreciation, and that's what all these pictures will be of, of all the businesses that have put signs up. Uh, uh, recognizing Officer Long's sacrifice in his service, and it's just incredible. And uh, uh, it really means a lot to officers to see those things, because quite often, unfortunately, in our business, we see the public when they're not in a very good mood or having a hard time where they've had something broken into or damaged or involved in an accident. They're having a bad day. Exactly, and those things happen. So quite often, we don't get a thank you. We don't do it for the thank yous, we do it because we want to serve the public. But these signs mean a lot to the officers. A memorial fund has been set up for Officer Brent Long. And if you would like to make a memorial donation, I know a lot of people ask, what can I do? That is a great way to contribute, to reach out, to, to pay respect, to say thank you. And you can make a donation at any first financial banking location. If you would like to make a donation in regards to the canines, because obviously Shadow was injured here, you can make a donation to the Terre Haute Police Department and just put it to the attention of their canine unit. Yes, and that's, that's a wonderful way to uh, help out because uh, the, uh, the bills from, uh, for his uh, uh, surgery and everything else to uh, make, make sure that he uh, lived uh, will be very expensive, so that will be a big help if people could donate to the uh, canine fund to help pay for those bills. Earlier this week, we held a um, fundraiser out in front of our studio here on Ohio Street. 105.5 The River, High 99 Radio, and WTHI TV. We teamed up together with the Terrell Police Department, and it was extremely moving to see so many people not only make a donation, but to get out of their vehicles, shake the hand of a police officer, give them a hug. N not many dry eyes, not many dry eyes at all. Raised more than $26,000 in one day. Which is wonderful. And that, that will go a long way to helping, helping them. And if uh, they receive more than what they need for the bills, there's always uh, equipment that is needed for the uh, canines. And it's incredible. Um, most people have their own animals at home and own dogs, but they don't realize the, uh, all the equipment that is uh, required for the canines and the cost that goes into that. After we see the double lines go through, we're going to see another switch of the guards, and that's roughly at 1140. Correct me if I'm wrong here. And then we will then see all canines and their partners file by. 
that will be a ver very impressive scene as well. Yes, they're uh, expecting possibly uh, upwards of 100 to 200 canines from across the uh, United States. Uh, the numbers are, are hard to uh, plan for, but we do expect a large showing of canine. Uh, the only canines that won't be in that, uh, uh, that line there will be Terre Haute Police Department's canine. There's a separate time where they'll actually be allowed to pay their respects, and Shadow at this point in time will be with them as well, so he can pay his final respect to his, his partner. I would probably guesstimate that it would be difficult to keep all the dogs in line. With the heat, people might be concerned about those animals. We have nothing to worry about because that has already been taken care of. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, uh, many, many people don't realize the bond between a canine handler and their canine, but I mean, it is just like another family member. And so, uh, to be honest, I think quite often people might be surprised at how well the, uh, the handlers take care of them as far as what they feed them and everything. But in the case during the service, they won't actually be in the entire service because of all the noise that they would be making. But they'll be outside, but they will be in air-conditioned cars. The cars will be air-conditioned, so there's no chance in them overheating. Um, most handlers uh, will leave a, a small amount of water in their form. Sometimes they won't, in, but they'll go out and check on them. And, Many dogs get so excited that they spill that water, so they'll come out and check on them and put a little bit of water in there and then take it away and make sure that they're okay. But they'll, they'll be in air-conditioned cars, so they definitely will not get overheated. Do you have an update on Shadow at this point? I know a lot of people are always interested in status updates daily. Uh, the last I heard that Shadow is doing fine. Uh, they still anticipate him to uh, be with the uh, police department for at least another six, maybe eight weeks and then they plan to let him go back with the uh, Long family. So, so he will retire. Uh, that's my impression, and I, I think that's very fitting because uh, he was injured in the line of duty, and uh, he's, he's served his community very well. As we continue to watch the double line through the center of the Holman Center, these are officers from all over the country. Yes. Uh, these officers, it means a lot to them to have closure and to pay their respects. Most of them did not know Officer Long, but they also uh, feel that it is their duty to show that their respect that they have for him and to show the family that they support, support them. Again, after the guard change, we're going to see canines and their partners file by, as well as Baker Shift officers. They're going to be making their final salute. Baker Shift officers, can you explain what this means? Hey, the Baker Shift is the shift that Officer Long worked on. Um, most, most departments will have uh, three, four, or five different types of shifts, and it uh, signifies their letter day off. Uh, and in this case, uh, it was the uh, Baker shift that he served on. So it's the uh, officers that he worked with, and they're they're giving the uh, they're giving their final goodbye to him because they work with him on a, a daily basis. So, uh, uh, but yes, you, uh, lots of times, like uh, you'll hear it, instead of saying the B shift, many people don't understand that. So they actually give, and to make sure that they understand who they're talking about, they'll actually use the, an acronym or the Baker. Uh, in the military, they would say Bravo. Bravo. So uh, many members out there listening to you, are, I'm sure, are prior military, so they would understand that. Let's go over the ceremony today, because roughly we're guesstimating it's going to last about an hour. That's correct. We will start off with a final salute when the battle is over, and this will be performed by the Terre Haute firefighters, pipes and drums. Yes, and they'll actually um, be doing that uh, annual, and that's when the Terre Haute Police Department uh, canine members will be doing their final salute with Shadow, is right around that time. Uh, it looks like uh, you might have uh, completed all the officers that were filing by, and they're doing another changing of the guard, which in this case, uh, uh, they're at this point in time in the uh, service, it's all members of the Terre Haute Police Department's Honor Guard. 
and that's something that uh, I'd like to point out. Uh, I know firsthand because of uh, Officer Moore that we lost earlier, but how difficult it is. But these members of the Honor Guard who knew him personally, because it's such a small department, it's extremely difficult for them to keep their composure. But they're doing an excellent job at it. And uh, that's another way that they are showing their respect for Officer Long and the sacrifice he made. And again, you're witnessing the honor guard change at this time. And momentarily, we will see canines and their partners file by, as well as the Baker shift officers. They will be providing their final salute to Officer Brent Long. And I believe once the Baker shift officers make that final salute, we will begin the program after that, correct? Yes, shortly thereafter that. Uh, it was estimated that the time would be approximately 1140. It's looking like it might be a little bit earlier than that. Going back to the program, we talked about when the battle is over, the Terre Haute firefighters and pipes and drums playing. There will be a call to service. Darren Strofe, he's a sergeant with the Evansville Police Department, chaplain with the Indiana Fraternal Order of Police. As you are witnessing right now, canines, their partners, paying their final salute to Officer Brent Long. That's an impressive sight. Yes, it is. I mentioned to you earlier that these uh, canine partners are like family members to uh, these officers and an example of that one of the members of the uh, FOP uh, critical incident memorial team uh, was down is actually a canine handler and that's where his canine was last night was in his room sleeping with him as well so it's just like a family member to them uh, many many of these officers have probably had their lives saved by the, uh, the uh, dogs indicating when a, a perpetrator is hiding do we know roughly how many canines are going to be with us today? No, there was a, a we don't know exactly. There was an estimate of possibly of a, a hundred, but it, it, uh, unfortunately there's no good way to get a, a final count on that. just keep on coming more and more <coughs> one of the things that I've, I've noticed uh, or of interest is, is how well controlled that these uh, uh, handlers have over their partners um, there it is something that they train on a daily basis it's an, a, an amazing amount of training that these officers go through with their uh, partners uh, to keep them under such control Many of the uh, uh, animals, uh, many of the canine partners uh, view this as um, when they're out working is actually fun and then they, uh, their biggest joy then afterwards is to get a reward which is quite often like a rubber ball. Many people <laughs> thinking, think of a reward as like a dog bone or a treat and it's actually not. Many times it's just to get to play with the uh, ball and chase it. Oh, other handlers may, you know, get a towel and let them tug on it a little bit and play with them. So, uh. Shadow's experience has obviously been in the media spotlight, and if you're like me, 
wanting to know what I can do. Obviously, supporting the K-9 division at the Terre Haute Police Department is a great avenue. Again, you can make checks, monetary donations to the Terre Haute Police Department. Just identify that as to the K-9 unit, and those funds will go to protect and take care of the canines. I would say there's at least 100 dogs. At least, they just keep coming. Many of these officers and, and their different departments have also experienced line of duty deaths themselves and that's part of the reason why they, uh, they're here. As I mentioned earlier, many members of the critical incident memorial team do this because they're paying back. Um, I mentioned uh, Molly Winters and her husband. She was actually, um, she did other service besides here locally. She was the actual national, president's, national president of COPS or Concerns of Police Survivors. And Concerns of Police Survivors is exactly that. They support the survivors of the family members. Uh, in this case, Officer Long's family. So they will be uh, with them every step of the way at the uh, State Memorial and also at the National Memorial in Washington, D.C. Next, next May. It looks like we're witnessing another guard change. Could this be the final guard change before the service starts? Yes, and they, the, uh, they'll be, this should be the last change and then they'll actually be uh, taken off during the service. Uh, so this is probably will be the last stand that uh, will be up there. So after the guard change, we should expect to see the final salute when the battle is over by the Terre Haute firefighters' pipes and drums. Then following the call to service by Darren Strofe, he is a sergeant with the Evansville Police Department, chaplain with the Indiana Fraternal Order of Police. Following that, the invocation, Todd Holler, sergeant with the Terre Haute Police Department. Then we can expect a musical tribute. If the good die young, Tracy Lawrence, and you will see a picture of Brent with the Honey Creek Fire Department. Remarks were then, will, will then be made by Honorable Duke Bennett, the mayor of the city of Terre Haute. We will then hear from Police Chief John Plassey with the Terre Haute Police Department, Assistant Chief Mark Eldred with the Terre Haute Police Department, Sean Keene, Assistant Chief with the Terre Haute Police Department. They will all provide law enforcement remembrances. Then we will have another musical tribute, Good Ride Cowboy by Garth Brooks. At that time, you will see picture a picture of Officer Brent Long with the Bigo County Sheriff's Department while he was a jail officer. This should be the uh, Baker shift uh, coming forward to do their final salute. Uh, that would uh, be Officer Long's shift that he worked with here at the uh, Terre Haute Police Department. And then here's the uh, Terre Haute firefighters' pipes and drums that you mentioned earlier, and they uh, are playing the song when the battle is over.
Now here very shortly you should have the uh, Terre Haute Police Department canine members doing their final salute with Shadow coming up. Looks like they also, uh, uh, Vico County Sheriff's Department has one of their canine members in there as well with the Terre Haute Police Department. Uh, due to the fact that they also worked at Vico County, I'm quite sure that they trained together here within the county. A tight family. Yes, it is. To the right of your television screen, you can see Shadow. Correct? We believe that that is uh, Shadow there, yes. Not positive. It's kind of hard to see from this vantage point, but I do know the plan was to have Shadow uh, up there. What you see here now is the uh, commander of their honor guard uh, going forward to pull the final guard. We'll actually tell them to post and then they'll give a final salute. And this is the final stand, the, the final time that he'll actually have uh, uh, the honor guard up there at the uh, foot and at the uh, head of the uh, officer long. Very shortly, you'll have uh, Sergeant Darren Strofe, uh, as you're picturing now, walking up to the podium to start the service. <laughs> 